I'm Drew Stevenson. This is for my professional responsibility class. Here we're going to be talking about an important comment to Rule 3.6. Rule 3.6, just to remind my students, is about lawyers making media statements or talking to the media about pending court cases. Comment 5 has material that used to be in the rule itself. It's several provisions of things that are basically presumptively off limits for the lawyer to say. A few years ago, the ABA moved this material into the comments, but for purposes of the MPRE and probably when you're in practice, you should treat this as part, these provisions as part of the rule. So let's dive in. Comment 5 begins, certain subjects are more likely than not to have a material prejudicial, prejudicial effect on a proceeding, and this, like, such as a civil matter triable to a jury. We're less concerned about bench trials um, th because the judge would presumably be more objective. Um, a criminal matter or any proceeding that may result in incarceration. Now, when we talk about presumptively prejudicial, a presumption essentially shifts the burden. So if a lawyer is facing discipline before um, a disciplinary authority for uh, allegedly violating this rule, if the lawyer made the statements we're about to talk about, it's uh, presumed that these were violations and the burden would be on the lawyer to show that for some reason um, these were not violations in this specific case. It's a kind of switching or reversal of the burden that we would normally have in proceedings. So let's go back to our comments because it's going to move through several items. Item one says, the character, credibility, reputation, or criminal record of a party or a suspect in a criminal investigation or a witness. And so I, I know that you may have seen this uh, occur with uh, prosecutors or defense lawyers will say, I know this person is guilty or I know this person is innocent. It actually violates the rule to do that. Whether the rule is enforced or not, I'm teaching you what you need to know for the MPRE. The, <clears throat> so don't make statements about the, whether certain witnesses or, um, or parties are credible or their character or their criminal records. Um, also, don't reveal the identity of witnesses that haven't testified yet at trial or the expected testimony of any party or witness. Item two is specifically about criminal cases. In a criminal case or any proceeding that could result in incarceration, the possibility of a plea of guilty to the offense. So sometimes you'll see situations where a prosecutor wants to say, we've offered them a plea deal or the defendant says we want a deal or we've been offered a deal. Actually, the rule says that you should not talk to the press about the possibility of a plea bargain. Don't talk to the press in a criminal case about the existence or contents of any confession or admission or statement given by a defendant or suspect. And this applies to both the defense attorneys and the prosecutors. Don't say we they confessed to the crime or they admitted it or they gave us a, we have a statement from them. Just avoid the topic. Um, or a defendant or suspect's refusal or failure to make a statement. Comment three is about um, tests and examination. So the performance or results of any examination or test, of course, the big ones are DNA tests and polygraph tests, um, but there could be other types of tests or examinations um, that you, and you basically should not talk about the fact that the test was done or hasn't been done or what the results were, or that a party has, uh, especially a defendant, has refused or uh, neglected to submit to an examination or test, or the identity or nature of any physical evidence expected to be presented. So don't talk about how we have the murder weapon um, or things like that, any physical evidence. Item four, don't express any opinion as to the guilt or innocence of a defendant or suspect in a criminal case or proceeding that could result in incarceration. And this, again, applies to both the prosecutor and the defense attorney. So don't say, I know my client is innocent. Or if you're the prosecutor, don't say, um, we know he's guilty. Uh, there's no question about his guilt. You can say, he, we had probable cause to charge him with the crime. Uh, there's evidence of his guilt, but don't express a personal opinion about it. 
Item five says information that the lawyer knows or reasonably should know is likely to be inadmissible as evidence in a trial. So for example, a lot of law students know that polygraph tests or lie detector tests are not admissible um, in most jurisdictions at, as evidence at trial. So don't talk about that to the media. And there's people who will say, well, we were willing to take a lie detector test. My client passed a lie detector test or things like that because it's not going to be admissible to trial and it could just um, create a substantial risk of prejudicing an impartial trial or getting uh, uh, influencing the jurors if they get wind of this. Item six, we're almost done here, is the fact that a defendant has been charged with a crime. So don't even say, um, my client has been charged with a crime or we, we as a prosecutor have charged this person with a crime, unless you're going to add the quick disclaimer that the charge is an accusation and that the defendant is presumed innocent until and unless proven guilty. That's pretty easy to say. So you can say they've been charged with a crime as long as you add, of course, in our country, people are innocent until proven guilty. We don't want to give the impression to the media that the fact that they've been charged with a crime means we already know that they're guilty. And that concludes our quick video about Comment 5 to Model Rule 3.6.